Hey there, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our webinar today, Jumpstart Your Content Cleanup Project and Get to Results Quickly. Today, we have two content cleanup experts from our consulting team here to present, Jeffrey Denning, our VP of Strategic Initiatives, and Emil Okan, one of our project managers. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you that we have a poll towards the beginning of the webinar, so look out for that so you can cast your vote. And feel free to ask any questions throughout the webinar, which Jeff and Emil can answer at the end. Lastly, when you exit the webinar, there will be a short survey, and we'd love to hear your feedback. That's all I have, so enjoy the webinar, and I'll hand it over to you, Jeff. Great. Thank you, Mary-Kate. So welcome, everyone, to our webinar this month. Um, again, we're going to be on the uh, content cleanup project uh, realm and, and talking about some things that um, we've kind of uh, learned over the course of the last few months and, and that um, kind of reacted to. We're going to show you some things. And, you know, one of the things that we've dealt with a lot is our customers coming back to us and actually talking about how it's difficult to um, kind of get started or they kind of get caught up in the act of trying to do cleanup and they aren't able to get to their end result, their goals that they're going. And actually getting rid of rot does not need to be difficult, right? We, um, we've come up with some ways to, to really kind of get through that and to take the difficulty out and the, the kind of the different um, roadblocks that we hit as we go through this process. And there's a lot of great tools out in the market that provide us a lot of great information and capabilities to get there, but there's certain uh, processes and, and little things along the way that's going to help us get that. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that a little bit today. But first, we're going to start with a quick poll. So a quick question is, have any of you experienced any of these challenges as it's related to content cleanup? I'm not sure where to start. Um, have a tool to identify the data, but what do I do next? Can't get approval? Or really, how best to engage our end users? So let's run this quick poll. And, uh, and we'll see if anybody's in, these, uh, in this particular um, situation. These are some of the topics we're going to kind of show some things we have that apply to these particular um, experiences here, these particular options along the way, and areas that we're seeing people get caught up. I think we're almost there. Um, I think our results are in. So yeah, so a lot of people are not sure where to start. And, um, how to engage the end users? Look, we're all, all over the little board. So that's that's awesome. So um, we're gonna we're gonna cover a lot of stuff that hopefully are gonna help you kind of get this stuff here. So we'll um, let's keep going on here. And um, one of the biggest whoops, side too far. One of our biggest um, challenges, right? Very common is we have this tool or we're using something to kind of give us some. Uh, information about our files. So think of just getting all this information about our different files, names and sizes and modified dates and all that other information. It's, it becomes overwhelming. It's where do I start? Where do we kind of um, get going from here? Um, and that's, that's a very common challenge and one of the things that we're trying to address. And uh, at this point, you know, Emil, like uh, you're doing a lot of this stuff out in the field. You know, where, where are customers at with this stuff? Yeah. So um, it's interesting the results of the poll, right? Um, the first, the highest uh, one is engaging the end users, and and that has a lot to do with being able to put a structure or a framework into your approach, right? And that's where a lot of companies get lost because they dive into this without a framework, and so it's easy to get lost in the weeds. And you don't know, you know, what you're trying to achieve, who you're trying to engage in those kind of things. And this is what one of the things that we're going to focus on in this webinar is how to simplify the process and put a framework into your approach. Perfect. Thanks so much, Emil. And we'll uh, now let's jump into the thing. So some of the other things that we're hearing, these are just common challenges that I think a lot of folks that are kind of getting um, started here or or taking a look at it is. Um, you know, not knowing what we have, or I get all this information about the files, but what do I really do with this? What does this really mean to me? How do I use this to make decisions? What policies should I use, right? Can't get approval to delete content or quarantine content if really you don't have a good understanding of the policies or a good definition of those policies. How do we take action? Maybe we have a way, we have our policies and, and they're all grouped together, they're self-explanatory, but 
how do we take actions that we now that we have those policies and then how do we involve our end users how do we get to our end user committee um, our you know subject matter experts the people that know the most about the data how do we get to them without overwhelming them with um, with the ch with challenges around this particular um, content cleanup so let's let's look at some of the ways to um, address these challenges so there's there's four areas that we're really going to speak about here today um, um, that allow us to get to results one is this um, this simplification of doing a meta data only scan on file shares just defining a footprint coming up with a content profile around what you have what it looks like so that you could begin making decisions on that data start with some basic policies and we're going to look at some of that policy stuff reporting and analytics that one of the best tools you can do is take all that data put it into stuff that's easily consumable right by both management people running the project your end users just make it um, consumable put it into some visualizations so you can actually see what you have and then really simplify the process of action and that's you know the lead quarantine whatever your actions are along there so let's jump into the first one starting a metadata scan on file shares right the goal here is to get results back quickly right so go get some data pick a chunk of data get me some results quickly so we can begin doing this we don't have this long wait to actually get to to work to be done um, and this allows us to quickly identify areas of potential rot. So we're trying to find areas that we can clean up as fast as possible um, and find some simple, easy to use tools that will get us there, right? The, the whole process of cleanup has multiple steps. It's a little bit of a journey. We've talked about this on, on prior webinars about the whole entire process. This is like one little piece. How do I get started? How do I start showing some ROI? And this is one of those really, really good areas. Um, and what you want to do is metadata, identify areas, come up with a content profile. So here I'm going to turn it over to Emil. He's going to talk a little bit about um, a customer engagement, what we mean by a content profile, and how we can go about using that to simplify the process. Right. So by developing your own content profile, it allows you to achieve a few things. First is develop your policies, like you mentioned, Jeff, which is, you know, uh, knowing where your content resides and knowing what kind of content you have will definitely assist you in a great way in developing your policies. You know, do you want to move or quarantine the data? Do you want to immediately delete them? And those kind of actions. Secondly, uh, that also allows you to set your goals. And I'm saying, I'm referring to SMART goals, right? The acronym. You want to set your goals to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely, because that keeps the project moving forward. You need to be able to show results as you go through your journey. As you mentioned, this is going to be a journey. It's not gonna be a quick one-time effort, right? This is most likely going to be in, in most enterprises and most big companies, it's gonna be a repetitive process. And as you go through an iteration of data cleanup, you get, you learn more from your experience and you get to develop better policies that are more appropriate to your um, organization. And the uh, third thing that you, that the content profile will allow you to do is develop a roadmap. Again, um, without a roadmap, you can easily get lost in the weeds, right? You need to be able to focus on what you're trying to achieve, focus on the quick wins, and be able to deliver results right away. And once you have developed your roadmap, it will then be easier for you to socialize what your goals are to uh, and get executive approval, right? So everyone is visual, right? If you can visualize what's about to happen, it's more likely that you will get better feedback and most likely an approval from executives. Great, um, super helpful. So let's move on to another topic around our um, policies and our probability levels. You know, why don't you talk a little bit about what this is all um, helping us out with. So once you've developed your content profile, uh, one of the key things that we're uh, trying to promote is deal with your content in big buckets. 
don't get lost in the weeds, right? So one of the uh, benefits of having a framework is be able to categorize your rot into probabilities. What most likely is rot? So what we're offering here is that put them in three different categories, right? B very high level, big buckets. High probability rot, medium, and low probability. Each probability level will have a corresponding action easy for you to act on and will minimize your end user engagement. So in this framework, high probability are those content that we know are most likely to be raw and can easily be either archived, quarantined, or deleted immediately. Medium probability raw are things that, yeah, you know what, uh, I think based on our record retention policies or our data uh, policy in general are most likely rot, but there's a chance that they can still be useful. And so we're just going to move them to a quarantine area for the time being, which will be deleted eventually. Low probability are the ones that, you know what, I need input from my end user. What this framework allows us to do is minimize the amount of data that your end users need to engage with, right? You want to minimize the impact on your end users. And right. yeah, and then if we go on into um, sample policies that you can provide. Now, we want to start with simple basic policies. And the reason for that, again, is focusing on quick wins, right? Don't, don't chew more than you can, don't bite more than you can chew, they say, right? So um, you, it can be the obvious ones, uh, like files that are named backup or to be deleted or files that cannot actually be opened. You know, there are some temporary files out there, or log files, or even time-based criteria, you know, files that have not been accessed in over five years. Those are easy items to identify as raw. Awesome. Yeah, this, that's really good. And, you know, this, this whole policy stuff is um, having some, uh, having a starting point or, or set of policies that are kind of out of the box and gives you a starting point that you can edit a little bit. It makes the approval process a little bit easier too, right? So the, the policies become simple. The approval process then is a little bit easier to get from management because it's understandable. You're able to um, very easily equate a policy to a set of content. You can say, hey, I have these thousand files, but here's exactly why they're showing up as high probability lots. So the simplification of the policies is really helpful in getting to those decisions and having then those decisions are not holding you back from being able to continue moving forward. So um, really good stuff. The next thing is um, leveraging reporting and analytics. And I think this is one area that um, is really um, showing to, to, to allow us to have better conversations with our clients, to be totally honest, right? The, the development of dashboards to easily socialize um, what we're doing and drive executive approval, right? We're able to show, visually show um, numbers and stats and where we're going and the progress we're making, we're making and, that's, and that's super helpful. It also allows that confidence in the policy. So when we look at a policy, we show the files that are around those policies, we can see, um, hey, we're getting the right thing. It makes it easier down the road. We start moving a little bit quicker because we have confidence in those probabilities that we that we set up. We can simulate what's gonna happen when we delete. If we can follow these policies, where are we gonna to get to the cleanup? How much are we gonna be able to, um, to actually clean? And then also showing progress towards those goals. So um, dashboards that show here's what's been identified and here's the various actions we've taken. And over time, watch those charts change and show the identified contact, content actually being actioned upon versus sitting and just identified. And that's one of the big things. Identification is easy. Action and cleanup is the harder part. So we want to transition and reporting allows us to show progress. It allows teammates and people on the team to realize that we're getting places. And that's, that's really important um, in this process. I think in anything we do nowadays, being able to show progress and um, kind of movement towards goals is helpful for people along the way. So. Um, we're going to turn it over to um, um, Emil here again, and we're going to show another comp uh, customer example around 
to analyze the, prob the probabilities that we're talking about. So Emil, just talk about this a little bit. Right, so once you have developed your content profile and um, took a stab at putting your policies together, this allows us then to visualize what you're about to embark on, right? Like you said, the, the biggest, the bigger task here is not collecting the information, but it's actually acting on the information that you have at hand. So putting it into some kind of framework like this allows you to easily visualize and then eventually socialize and get executive approval on what you're about to do, right? Uh, what you're looking at here is that you, it tells you, okay, of the content that we have analyzed, how much of it are qualified or candidate for deletion and how much of it I'm expecting my end users to review. So uh, this really facilitates a lot of things, right? It allows you to one, validate whether or not your policies are accurate. And for first timers, it, you know, your, your first stab at it is most likely not gonna, going to be the exact thing that you're expecting to happen or that you want it to do, right? So putting dashboards like this and doing data analytics allows you to identify right off the bat before you embark on your journey the potential risks and issues that you might run into and allows you to do simulation like what jeff said which then you know is easier for you to quantify the risks and benefits of your data cleaning up process yeah, good stuff. And uh, I think, you know, to note here, when you're looking at the slides, you can see the probability is actually set up by the policies as well. So you get to see in a particular, pro you know, probability category how some of the policies are laid out. And it's really helpful over time as well. I talk a lot to clients about anomalies, right? When you're going through the review of your ROT after you've done you know, a metadata scan and you kind of get, gather your results together and you come back to, you know, pages like this, dashboards like this, you're looking for anomalies. You're looking for areas that, you know, in the past I've seen on average, you know, 20% of my, my particular data being temp and backup and one particular department, all of a sudden my temp and backup is pushing that 40, 45%. Well, that's an anomaly and it gives us the ability to quickly just act on the stuff we need to to act on and the other stuff that's coming in, we're confident in our policies, our numbers look about the same, we're just pushing that off. And what we're doing is we're taking the burden off of all the people in the project and making it go a little bit quicker. We talk about not going back to the end users for too much data. That's what all this is doing. And it's so much easier to visually um, go through this stuff than it is to kind of look at spreadsheets and lines and lines of file names and that type of stuff. This really simplifies the process. Anytime you build these types of things, you can click through into a course, right? So you have the ability to, to kind of click in those other areas. So um, super helpful um, in that whole categorization of, of ROT and coming up with what I need to do, what does it look like, how much am I going to save, and all those other kind of areas. You can see them and you can drive these buckets based on your policies. So super helpful in that area. Um, and then the next thing is, really making it easy to take action. Um, this is where a lot of organizations, quite honestly, get um, get stopped in the whole process, right? They get that cold feet syndrome. They, they're like, hey, my policies are good, and hey, all the data looks good, but and do I really want to hit that delete button? Do I really want to take that jump, so to speak? Um, and that's where a lot of the stuff that we came up earlier, you know, builds that confidence so that you have that that confidence to take action, right? But we wanna have minimum involvement for high probability rot. We wanna just be able to, the stuff that's rot, that we know it's rot or policy says get rid of it, right? This way we're gonna be able to take our time and spend it where we need to spend it, right? We wanna allow end users to mark up the data they know best. When we get to low probability rot, usually it's low probability because we're not really sure if it's rot. There's characteristics that say we may not need it, but we're not really sure based on just those properties whether we need it. We need someone to help us. Someone in marketing can say, hey, yeah, we use this data for X. Um, we don't need it after a year. Or we use this data for X and it's historical and we like to keep seven years of it. That information is not always available to us, 
We have to go to the end users, but we don't want to go with go to them with everything, right? So allow them to know to mark up the data they know best. Only share with them what they need to see, right? Don't give them high probability rounds. Don't give them medium stuff that we can make decisions on. Give them the stuff that matters to them. Give them the stuff that we need their input and don't overburden them. Um, and you'll see with the reporting, when we can come into that reporting, we start to give them um, views into the data that slice it down a little bit more um, into details and, and in some ways to act upon it. So we're going to go to the next slide. I'm going to turn it over to Emil. He's going to talk a little bit about um, how we kind of get into some more details so, so people can, can make actions and see progress. Right. So one of the key things in keeping your data clean up or content analysis and cleanup journey is to show progress, right? So it's critical for any project manager or any um, champion to be able to show results immediately. And the analytics and the dashboards that we put together is going to allow you to do that. So off the bat, using the policies that you have, uh, that you put in place, you will be able to keep track and report on data or content that you have acted on. And this is really critical because most companies would start on a pilot and they want to see what the immediate results are, right? So key thing in doing your data cleanup or your jumpstarting your data cleanup journey is to, you know, show immediate results like we said, like focus on the quick wins. What, what can we achieve in a very short time period that would show value to the enterprise, right? And having statistics available to you at your fingertips is very important to keep socializing that and get to that point where you can actually launch your data cleanup journey on an enterprise-wide level. Yeah, and so, so I mean, like, take one of these slides real quick, and I kind of put you on the spot here, but explain how those numbers would kind of change as you're going through the course of a, course of a cleanup, like, um, right. so in, in the, those various bars. Is once you've applied your policies to that content that you have um, analyzed, the first thing that would show up in our graphs here would be, files or content that are scheduled to be archived and are scheduled to be deleted. And then based on your policy, depending on how you want to act on your rod in each level of probability, you know, uh, high probability rod, you, you can immediately delete because you are very sure that those are rod, right? Medium, you might want to put into an archive location or quarantine location first. And then low probability raw, you may want to engage your end users so that they can pick and choose which ones they approve to be deleted, right? And you can see the different bars on each graph here or on each chart by probability level that they will, the content will move from one bar to the other as you act on your data. And this is critical, especially when you're just doing a pilot, because it shows the reliability or your confidence on your policies on how you're acting on your data, right? So as you move through your journey, or as you go through the, the data content analysis, content analysis journey, and, and you know you you can show progress uh, immediately. And like, like what Jeff was mentioning before, a lot of this is customizable depending on what your risk tolerance is, right? So the policies, you know, all these dashboards and graphs allow you to mimic or simulate what you're about to do, right? And based on that, combined with knowing what your content profile is, you'll be able to be better at socializing what you're about to embark on and get your executive approval and you know showing progress is again a key to keeping the momentum of your data cleanup project oh, very good thank you and then here we have another slide um kind of a little view of a, a, a tool here for some things so i'm going to let emil talk a little bit about this as well 
Right. So uh, based on the poll, um, the biggest concern is engaging your end, end users, right? So we're trying to simplify the process. One of the uh, main component of having a framework is minimize the amount of data that your end users need to review. Once you've, you know, isolated that chunk of data that end users have to review and, you know, things that they know best, how they use it, when it's useful, whether or not, you know, it's irrelevant or relevant, still relevant, we want to give them a tool that's easy to use as well so that they can easily click and check mark the ones that they say, oh yeah, these files I've not looked at is in, in over two or five years, or these files are now irrelevant to the business, right? It has no business value anymore. So we want to make that process as easy and as painful, as painless as possible, and give them a user interface that is easy and common, I mean like, familiar to them. We, we don't want to embark on a, a data cleanup journey where you have to worry about end user training, right? Uh, big, the bigger your corporation is or your enterprise is, the, the bigger that task becomes. You know, training is such a big factor in doing it, embarking on a data cleanup project. So we want to minimize that. And also we also, we want to make the solution adaptable and familiar to the users. Because like we said, this is a journey. It's not a one-time process. They're gonna go through this multiple times and probably for eternity, right? This is gonna be a continuing program in your enterprise. And so we want this process to be as painless as possible. So the, the user interface that you're looking at right now is a simplified way of reviewing your data. You can sort through your folders, you can sort it by file name, you can sort it by file type, and then you can just simply click on the things that you approve to be deleted, and that's it. And the, 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 you know, your policies will be implemented and, you know, it will be put into work. Awesome. Well, thanks, Emil. So uh, I want to kind of put a little cap on this here at the end here and just go through a couple things. So um, I know we showed a bunch of different screenshots and different items around the thing, and it's, it's important to note that those, those screenshots and some of those, to those tools we showed are part of uh, an Integro uh, propriety file share analysis and cleanup solution for metadata and stuff like that. Um, they're just basically techniques and templates that we've put together going through this content cleanup over and over again with our customers, right? Trying to come up with the concept of, you know, doing it right the first time, getting people unstuck. These tools are definitely complementary to some of the other tools out in the marketplace, tools that we actually at Integra uses like Stored IQ and Active Nav and tools that are doing the metadata discovery. Um, the content that they identify can be put into these tools and the tools use the same way. So it's a, a complementary if you're already embarking on your your journey and done some stuff, but you're looking for a way to simplify that, you know, end user process or a way to visualize your data. They're definitely complementary to that. So um, it's stuff we develop and it's stuff that works with the tools that we that we work with. If you've you know been part of our webinar series, you know that we work with a lot of tools in this in this space. And this is really meant to be complementary to a lot of stuff as well as to be helpful in getting off the ground in those first things. So um, if you want to learn more, um, connect with us. There's going to be a survey at the end here, and um, you can leave some comments or not, but uh, it's, it's stuff that we, you know, it's just based on experience, um, kind of doing this a while. So um, we're going to stop here. We're going to take some questions. Um, Mary-Kate, I don't know if you have any questions there, but Emil and I clearly can, uh, can answer here for a minute or two. I think we're almost at time. Great. Thanks, Jeff. We do have a couple here. Uh, the first one we have is, can the tools you showed be installed on premise versus the cloud? Yeah, so uh, I'll talk about that really quick. But yeah, the, for the most part, what we're doing is putting it in the cloud, just using you know um, cloud services to provide some database and some web interfaces to the content. But if if it's something you want to put on premise, it's absolutely uh, doable. Um, you know, there's a database involved, a little IIS type stuff, and not overly complicated. It's not a uh, it's not a software on the shelf that you buy. It's more of some tools that we deliver with some 
consulting services around it. Awesome, thanks. Then we have one more here and then I can have you guys sign off. Uh, the last one is if we had custom policies, can the tools be modified to support these? Yeah, so again, um, you know, the, the way we look at it is simplified policies. We have some like out of the box type stuff that we share with our customers, but we can of course tweak those and we can add new as long as the policies, you know, the policies basically come down to almost like some queries and stuff that we do against the information we get back. So you can sure edit um, some of that stuff to kind of make it fit your particular um, deployment or what you're looking to to come up with. Uh, we always recommend staying in those buckets that, you know, the high, medium, low probability type buckets, but the policies within those buckets can be, can be modified to fit your needs. All right, all awesome. Right. That's all we have. Well, thanks, everyone. I appreciate your time this afternoon again for attending. And uh, if you have any questions, I think you know where to find us. Thank you. Bye bye.